Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrac. I'm Mikey G, and it's Thursday, October 13th. Many industry watchers are claiming that Tesla is facing demand destruction. In a new note to clients this week, Morgan Stanley analyst Adam Jonas, one of the top analysts covering Tesla, lowered the firm's expectation for the company and noted, quote, is Tesla experiencing demand destruction? Very likely at the margin, although this would be reflected in shorter lead times and price declines in coming months, as even EV customers may be feeling the effect of inflation or fatigue slash buyer strike. Now, at Electric, we don't exactly see it this way. If demand were a problem for Tesla, we might be seeing some demand triggers being pulled, which is not the case. Tesla has not changed any pricing for their vehicles, which would be which would be easy for them to do from a marketing standpoint, as prices have only increased steadily in the last two years. But really, this could be just a temporary issue, as Tesla's demand reports could be a result of the upcoming USA tax credit. Tesla buyers can technically regain access to the $7,500 tax credit if they take delivery next year. Tesla is not accommodating buyers who are eligible, like other automakers are, and therefore it might be experiencing some cancellations as contract time runs out. Of course, we anticipate that the Wall Street analyst knows this too, but if there is anything to it, then we will see demand spike approaching the new year. One month ago, a white hat hacker known as Green found code in Tesla vehicles to indicate that they gave one-off builds with different software codes to safety agencies testing the vehicle. And now we have a little bit more information. An investigation into the matter has not found any evidence that the automaker cheated on the crash tests. The Euro NCAP program director, Alan Williams, said, quote, The integrity of its star rating scheme is of the utmost importance to Euro NCAP, and we will continue to do all we can to ensure the rating reflects the safety which consumers can expect from their vehicles. So far, Euro NCAP's investigations have not revealed any evidence of any attempt to cheat the tests by Tesla. Now, as to why Tesla has code referencing the safety agencies in the first place, The Euro NCAP has reportedly told that they have been used only to identify the region for which the car is configured. Now, this answer isn't entirely bulletproof, since the vehicles that are sent to other markets, like Japan, also use other road markings, yet they don't share the same differences in code. Rivian has yet to officially expand the R1T electric pickup deliveries outside the U.S., however, some of them have landed in Africa. Rivian is contributing 1% of its equity to a project called Forever. Forever has a philanthropic mission of climate change. The new images and video that Rivian shared are in partnership with the Maasai Wilderness Conservation Trust in Kenya. The goal is to carry out, quote, vital conservation work in the most efficient and environmentally friendly way possible, including quiet anti-poaching patrols, zero tailpipe emission transport for Maasai firefighters, and critical on and off-road rangers operations. Thanks to the recently passed Inflation Reduction Act, an urgent call to action from the European Union has come against what they say as discriminatory tax credits and incentives made against European and Asian car makers. President Biden's flagship act provides tax credits on U.S. produced vehicles from the USA, Canada, and Mexico. But conspicuously absent are other countries in which America has strong trade agreements with. EU officials claim that the new legislation is unfair to foreign producers and puts undue pressure on European automakers to move their businesses stateside to take advantage of billions of dollars of incentives on offer. The European Commissioner's Executive Vice President, Marguerite Vestigar, said, quote, As a matter of principle, you should not put this up against friends. South Korea, too, hasn't minced words, saying the act violates trade rules and threatens the economic partnership. Stay tuned for my opinion on the response from international trade. Electric school buses are rolling out across the U.S. In a significant milestone, Thomas Built Buses announced on Wednesday that they delivered 200 Proterra-powered electric school buses, with the latest going to Monroe County, Indiana. Each year, 450,000 school buses travel over 4.3 billion miles. This is according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Even though 200 is just a fraction, you got to start somewhere. Okay, it is opinion time. I think that international trade is right to feel cheated by the Inflation Reduction Act and what it means for EV investment. America has a great deal of economic power, or economic artillery, as some would say, 
And to me, this seems a little heavy handed. This will shift car companies into making investments in America, which is good for us here, but for them, it's just a big cost of doing business, and it may not be one that they can afford. We have been noting, as we go on with electric news, that time and again, electric transition will be escorting failing companies out of existence. And now that foreign produced cars are being coerced into spending money on USA production, this will further duress those small companies and put the power back into the hands of the few who can afford it. I think this will hurt EV competition and give us fewer electric vehicle options to choose from. If the act goes unchallenged, which I think it will, there is still a silver lining. Years ago, before the act and before all the investment, I worried that America would be left behind the rest of the world in electric vehicles, and the lagging large USA auto market would drag down the whole EV revolution. But we dodged a bullet there, it seems, although it came at a cost. In today's community comment found on YouTube, M. Patrick says, Your videos keep showing a car crossing a double yellow line. Isn't that illegal? For those of you listening in, during the short break between stories, I show a top-down view of a vehicle driving on a windy road, and indeed it does cross a double yellow line. So, yes, M. Patrick, under normal circumstances, that would be illegal. However, that road was closed for the Pikes Peak hill climb. A couple of years ago, I was on the scene to film a few Tesla vehicles that were in attendance. The footage I used for Quick Charge I shot myself, with the subject being the Model 3 that was driven by Blake Fuller from the YouTube channel Electric Performance. I met Blake briefly, and he seemed very nice. He was still in awe from the amazing support that he had received that year to compete. Thanks for your question, M. Patrick, and thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electric. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.